Hi, very good morning to you. Um, in this video, I just want to address a couple of anxieties that um, some people can have. And uh, in, in this particular video, we're going to concentrate on just two things. Uh, we've got Mary Heath, um, who's made a comment yesterday about CO2 being an intelligent gas, uh, you know, and it builds up on one side of the jet stream and moves it. Bit of sarcasm there. But you're right, you know, to do that, you know, because what they're saying about CO2 isn't true. And I will demonstrate something uh, with regards to CO2 and SO2. Uh, so we're going to be looking at carbon dioxide and sulfur dioxide on those two topics. John Baxter, um, one of our regular subscribers, and has also uh, donated a few quid here and there to the observatory, has said, can we track, C uh, you know, uh, sulfur dioxide uh, with all the uh, increasing volcanoes kicking off around the world um, you know it'd be a good idea to see what sort of effect that has on the atmospheric uh, and climate uh, models I will just say this that around 2015 John um, there was uh, a survey done by some scientists and they were asking the ethical questions about once they discovered what uh, local CO, SO2 does when it's erupting out of a volcano they found that it called uh, the region that it was erupting in and they wanted to know if they could make a particular uh, chemical compound a synthetic uh, sulfur dioxide compound or something that did the same to the atmosphere whether they could then first of all prove that they could make this compound that wouldn't have an effect on the environment or life or biodiversities or biological systems and if they could would it be the right thing to do to spray uh, the subtropics with it both over the northern and southern hemisphere that was done in 2015 what they did manage to do is actually create that uh, compound whether they used it or not is another thing perhaps we'll never know but you know, I think if you start messing around with nature, you're messing about with a really big system and it could go terribly wrong. We just don't know. If we was to spray that compound in the subtropics, call the globe down and, uh, you know, at what level would we actually do that? Could we trigger the next coming uh, glacial period? That would be devastated. Uh, and devastating to the planet if they did that but we can we can use a little bit of science to answer both of these questions first of all is CO2 a real problem is SO2 a real problem well we can have a look at what we've been doing for the last 10 months and answer them questions and I'm going to show you just how powerful uh, the earth health at a glance can be and the data that we can get out of it so let's get into it so we're here over Pulse, at Pole Shift News, we're looking at Earth Health at a glance and you know, I want to show you now what we've been doing over the last 10 months and how we can extrapolate some information from it. What I'm basically giving you is atmospheric CO2 readings as well as um, you know, the atmospheric oxygen, the magnetic north pole positions, um, you know, lots of uh, numbers attached to all these things. We can do something with them numbers, we can put them in Excel. And because we've got an archive on the website, you can collect the data yourself and experiment with it as much as you want. It's a tool and it's been done honestly. It's been done using the right equipment for the, the job. And there's a lot of data there. And, uh, you know, I think some people take it for granted. Uh, you know, we've probably now got 30 data sets of a collective uh, amount of numbers and data on all the anomalies or some of the main anomalies like earthquakes, volcanic eruptions, background radiation, muons, uh, active sunspots, whether the sun is in an unsettled state with regards to solar x-rays or geomagnetic fields. We've got the data and that's why Earth Alpha at a glance is a real powerful tool. And we can use that data, like I say, in Excel, we can put the numbers in over the amount of times we've recorded it and we can pull off a chart very quickly and easily and we can ask the question should we be concerned so in this case I've just used atmospheric uh, CO2 and the amount of volcanoes first of all I want to know how many volcanoes are erupting over the period of time that we've been doing it which is from the 12th of the 8th 2020 now till the 28th of the 5th 2021 so just under or around about 10 months worth of data 
and there's probably about 35 data sets in total, but that's including everything. So let's have a look at the chart on volcanoes and ask the question, first of all, are, they all, are, are the volcanoes on an increase? So I've took 29 entries just from the website that we've just been looking at, at, at the amount of volcanoes over a 10 month period of time. And what we're seeing is the average is around about 25 volcanoes um, on average that erupts. Uh, you can see at the beginning when we done it at, uh, in 2020, you can see that they fall below 25, but then halfway along the chart, they seem to increase. So there has been recently a slight increase on the volcanoes, but they are on average erupting 25 um, around the world um, based on you know the 29 data sets that we've got. If we'd been collecting data over a longer period of time and we had a chart like this, one, one is below the 25, the other half is above. We could say on average, 25 um, volcanoes erupt uh, regularly around the world and therefore there's nothing to be alarmed with. Uh, SO2 in the atmosphere can cool the, uh, the, the climate down around the region, that's been proven. Uh, like I said, with that experiments that was done by those scientists that came up with that compound that there could easily be sprayed around the tropic regions and you know that could cause the earth to go into a cooling state uh, there was questions of ethics whether they should use it or not whether they have used it or not is another question but is it is the reason why we've had an unusual cold may at this time of the year because of that or is it because the jet streams have been altered well i think if you ask me Personally, from what I see, I think it's jet streams and the reason why the jet streams are acting the way they are is very likely because there's more cosmic ray interaction in the upper atmosphere due to a grand solar minimum and a weakening magnetosphere on our planet. I wouldn't have said that it was also due to some crazy scientists with some spraying equipment attached to aircrafts going around the subtropics, um, you know, spraying this compound into the atmosphere because... Um, I, I, I don't know how much you'd have to spray first of all are we talking hundreds of thousands of tons of this compound I don't know I just think uh, you know we don't give credit to nature enough and uh, you know what we're seeing I believe like I say is a result of atmospheric um, interaction with cosmic radiation we did the same with uh, carbon dioxide levels uh, we took uh, all the data that we collected over the 10 months and put it on a chart like what we're looking at now and we can see that there's 34 entries of data and you know if your eye was to take a guess of an average of CO2 I'd say it was below 430 on there I know we do have a peak of 510 with one reading but I would say um, you know the average is just below 430 but that's why I'm saying, you know, the information that we've got on the website is quite powerful when you start to chart it and have a look at things like that, because then you get an average. And it's important because, you know, there's a lot of people out there that are worried about things like this. And, you know, it's not just CO2 or, you know, the magnetic north poles migrating or, you know, increases in volcanic activity and volcanoes, uh, sorry, and earthquake, um, you know, frequency. People, based on these things, and it could be just the volcanoes in some circumstances, are preparing for you know some catastrophe related to them, and they're spending a lot of money you know in that preparation, and they're also investing more than anything else time, and they're doing it without even checking some basic facts, and that's why I put now regularly up on the website Earth Health at a glance. So that you could just as easily as I did this morning, take off the numbers of volcanoes erupting CO2, bang them into Excel, do a, do a chart like this, and you've got the information in front of you, whether you should be concerned to the level where you're going to start investing time and money. You know, that's why I do Earth out, Earth out at a glance now, because I know there's a lot of anxiety attached to all these anomalies that are taking place some people are more interested in earthquakes some people are more interested in the pole shift some people are more interested in 
volcanic eruptions and the consequences of that. The fact is, if you just go over to Pulse Shift News and you check for the anomaly that you're interested in, you can pull the data off there because I've archived, you know, all the information on a lot of the stuff. Like we've got archives of TriMag data, mag magnetosphere strength, uh, magnetometers from different parts of the world. You know, the archive is there, and that is what is um, not as common on a lot of websites. They just show you the current levels. They don't show you the archive of data. And it's with the archives we can draw uh, the trends out of what really is going on. And, you know, we can ask the question, now should we be investing our time? Now should we be investing our money? You know, is this uh, really something that we should now be really concerned about and worried about and then start acting upon that? So that's why I say, you know, Earth Elf at a glance is a real powerful tool used correctly. We can, of course, use the modelling system that um, Norskull have and check these chemical compounds like sulphur dioxide and carbon dioxide on there. And just by selecting them, uh, we can have a look at you know the levels of CO2 and where they build up mainly around the world very quickly on air. But I will say this, we are trusting their database for the correct information and this looks like it's had a lot of money spent on this um, program and I would say that it could easily also be influenced by uh, more influential organisations attached to governments for political reasons or other and that's why I like to collect the data myself on these things because I know I do it honestly if it's high it's high if it's low it's low I record it and you know put it up on the website for you guys to see um, just have a quick look at uh, sulfur dioxide around the world just to give you an idea little pockets uh, building up probably around active volcanoes or heavily industrialized regions around the world And also, you know, there are some other chemical compounds that we can check on there as well, uh, you know, to get an idea of what is going on. So, yeah, um, you know, just sometimes people have a little bit of anxiety about these things. Um, you know, they ask the question and, you know, I like to try and help answer those questions um, if they're related to science mainly and uh, do my best to you know bring the information to you but like i say we do a really good job on the um website you know of delivering uh regularly data and it's very easy for you guys to convert that data into charts to then get you know the uh, trend of what is going on with related to that topic that you're interested in um we've got a couple of days left of this month and it has been a very poor month with regards to collecting you know the data um, sorry, with regards to you know raising a bit of funds uh, for the observatory, I think we managed to make around about three pound fifty yesterday. Uh, it would be amazing if we could get a little bit more support going for the observatory and try and make this month not look so bad over the time that we've been doing the observatory. Funds this month, for some reason, have been the poorest for about three years. So links down there if you want to help support what we do, and if you've got a question. Uh, relating to any of the things that we talk about fire it in the comments section any other thing to say guys is you have an amazing day look after your loved ones and as always bye for now